This is a 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. It's a trim of the brand new fourth generation Honda Pilot, and it's a trim that we saw last year as well. But for the fourth generation, it is very different than before. And by different, I mean real, authentic, actual. <laughs> it's no longer just a more rugged look. This is one inch higher off the ground. We have all terrain tires. We have a front skid plate and a skid plate covering the fuel tank. We have a different suspension tune and we have some different all wheel drive logic as well. All wheel drive is standard by the way, as are both a front and rear recovery hook setup. And the recovery hooks are specifically designed to handle two times the weight of this 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. Yeah, it's legit. Right now, I'm driving it on the road to get a sense of what it's like on the road, but I'm also gonna get a chance to drive the trail sport off-road on an actual trail. Where? Outside of Sedona, Arizona. I am currently on a trip as a guest of Honda's to try this new Pilot Trail Sport out, and they've set up a section of off-roading for us in the Trail Sport later on, and I'll definitely show you that soon. Okay. Now's a good time to pull over and show you inside and out of this trail sport in a bit more detail. Here it is, the 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport in all its lifted, all-terrain tire equipped glory. This particular one is painted in diffused sky pearl paint and it's a matte color and looks lovely. Looking at the car from the front, you can see it's got this big, like gloss black grill, big openings right here in the grill, interesting patterns in it, a loud and proud Honda badge right in front, and one of your cameras as well. We have this nice horizontal black strip that runs through the top of the grill and then kind of splits the headlamps a bit. So we've got some daytime running lights and turn signals right here, and then the main headlamps down below here. All in all, I think it's a good general look and fits the trail sport trim just fine. Looking at the car in profile, you can get a sense of how big the Honda Pilot truly is. And you can see that this one is a full inch higher off the ground than the Honda Pilot Elite. I was in the Elite just a little earlier, so I'll show you that right now. And you can see that there's a bit more of a gap in the wheel wells for sure. But otherwise, it's a very similar shape and, you know, I think looks good. It does have black side view mirror covers, this black roof rail up here, and black door handles as well. Just kind of stands out from that pearl paint to be sure. And what's almost hard to miss are these 18 inch instead of 20 inch trail sport wheels and continental terrain contact all-terrain tires. Not only are these tires much fatter in terms of sidewall, you have a 60 series sidewall, but they're also wider, 265 millimeters wide instead of 255. And they don't just look the part, these are legit all-terrain tires that have a real difference in traction when you're going off-road. And as you can see, this one has been off-road for a bit. Moreover, here is a look at that front skid plate right there, and right at the front of it, that is the front recovery point hook, right at the base of the skid point there. So yes, it is down low, but that is an attachment point that can handle up to two times the gross vehicle weight of the Pilot Trailer Sport and help get it out of some jams. Not only does the Pilot come standard with all-wheel drive and a trailer hitch, that trailer hitch is specifically designed to also be able to handle two times the gross vehicle weight of the Honda Pilot Trailer Sport, and that is the hitch itself and the chain hooks on either side. Also, there is a second skid plate under here to protect the gas tank. The front end of the car, the engine, the oil pan especially, the transmission, and also the fuel tank are protected by these big sheets of steel, these big skid plates right here. So that is real protection for the car. Looking at the rear of the car, it's pretty typical family size crossover SUV. That tow hitch can be used to tow, this can tow up to 5,000 pounds because it is the all-wheel drive pilot. Pretty decent number. It is a power lift gate. And that reveals 22 cubic feet of cargo space, 
behind the third row, which is pretty darn decent. And you do have 12 volt power supply right there, extra little storage bin right there, little tray right there, you could call that. And underneath the floor is actually a bit more space, a nice little place to partition out some stuff. And if 22 cubic feet of storage space isn't enough for you, but you don't need to carry seven people around, good news, these straps automatically flip the rear headrest down and you pull them back and fold them down right that. It's easy to do with one hand once you get the motions right. And just like that, you have way more than 22 cubic feet of storage. And if you only have two people and need to haul even more stuff, yes, there is even more space. And with the second row folded, you have more than 110 cubic feet of storage, and it is a nice flat floor and a nice wide and flat floor. This is a very big and spacious interior in the fourth generation Honda Pilot Trail Sporter Nell. No. All right, let's check out the inside. Access to the third row is quite easy. Press of a button right here. There are three seatbelts back there, one, two, and three, but Obviously, you can see that is still a quite low seat bottom, pretty narrow space. That is definitely a spot for kids. So no, I'm not going to go back there. It's not going to be comfortable for me. But they do get USB ports and cup holders to use, and it does look like a generally nice space. And because this is the trail sport, we have these nice rubberized floor mats to come with it. So helps keep the mud from digging into the carpets too much. But to the second row. The Trail Sport has a seven seat configuration. These captain's chairs with armrests built into them like that and this nice tray right here. So this does not have the optional eight passenger slash middle roll that folds down like a tray, but it does have three zone climate control. It also has AC power and two USB ports as well. This is not the Touring or Elite trim, but there is still a fair amount of luxury in here. I do have, for example, a shade for the side window. I also have this beautiful panoramic moonroof that lets in tons of natural light. And I do have what must be said are pretty comfortable seats. The seat bottoms are a little bit lower than ideal for me but I do have a solid two inches of leg room and headroom as well. I am five foot 11 inches tall or 181 centimeters. And yeah, I find this reasonably comfortable and could do a decent road trip in here without too much trouble. You get more evidence that it is a trail sport as you open the door with these nice big logoed rubber floor mats right here and the mud I added for a little bit of extra splash. The door itself, Lots of controls right here, two position seat memory, cup holders, space, more space, and this nice little trim piece right here. So I think it's generally a nice looking door. You do also have a button for the power lift gate right here, as well as traction control off right there. It is tilt and telescope adjusting steering, it is manually done right there. You do have lumbar as well as other power seat controls right there, and this nice red stitching that goes in the seats and up the top, trail sport is embossed into the headrest and that's both for the driver and the passenger even though this is the rugged honda pilot there is a fair amount of luxuries in here you do have this nice leather steering wheel you do also have a heated steering wheel this adjusts controls for the instrument cluster media stuff and then your adaptive cruise control right here push button start Trailsport trimmed pilots have a seven inch partially digital screen. It is on the left right here. On the right, that is an actual analog speedometer gauge right there. But this portion of the instrument cluster is adjustable with this dial right here. So if I push the home button here, you can see that I have lots of different options of things to look at right here. And then from here, I can scroll with the dial right next to it to see what I wanna look at. Lots of options. Lots and lots of options. And next to that is a nine inch center console touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Beneath that are the other two zones of your three zone climate control. And yes, you do have heated seats in addition to the heated steering wheel. You also have 
more USB power right here, 12 volt power right here, and a Qi wireless charger beneath that. It is a push button Prindle right there, electric parking brake, hill descent control right there. That's the auto engine off, you can turn that off. And then yes, many, many drive modes. I will show you that in just a minute. Right next to the cup holders and yes, a deep lower center console storage that can hold many water bottles. New for the fourth generation Pilot, and this is across the board, not just the trail sport, is this passenger shelf built in. And that is a nice spot for additional storage. That's a really good spot for a passenger smartphone as an example. Looking up, here are the buttons to control the panoramic moonroof. Yes, it does actually open, but it also closes and there is a privacy panel right here. Lovely. Okay, drive modes. You have many, many drive modes with the Trail Sport. You have Sport, Normal, Econ, Snow, Trail, Sand, and Tow. And Trail is a little bit special on the Trail Sport because it includes what Honda calls Trail Watch. And these are special cameras mounted in places to give you a nice view of what otherwise might be hidden by the front of the car. So you can get a real sense of what you're actually driving over if you're going up or down a steep grade, or if you prefer, you can see what's immediately to the sides of the vehicle as well. And right now we're looking at the forward facing camera, but if I put the car in reverse, we now have the option of the rear facing camera as well. There are many, many tricks that do make this a legit off-road capable vehicle. And I'm very lucky to be in Sedona and actually not tell you that, but show you that in just a little while. But for now, let's get back to the drive. I'm happy to report that on-road driving is totally pleasant. You do suffer worse fuel economy in the Trail Sport than you would in the other Pilot trims, and that's because of those all-terrain tires. They're not gonna be as low for rolling resistance, and they're also wider than the other Pilot tires. But, theoretically at least, and very likely, we will see benefit of that when we get a chance to take this thing off-road. Aside from the fuel economy hit, this is a perfectly pleasant car to drive on the road. The ride is perfectly compliant. If anything, it feels a little softer than the other Pilot trims. And road noise is a little bit higher because of the all-terrain tires, but it's not bad. It's not unbearable or anything like that, but it's just slightly elevated compared to a standard all-season tire. And just like the other Pilots, this uses a brand new powertrain. It is a dual overhead cam, three and a half liter V6. You now have 285 horsepower and the same 262 pound-feet of torque as the outgoing engine, but because it's dual overhead cam and brand new, its emissions is much, much less. So yeah, just like in the other Honda Pilot, this engine is plenty stout, plenty peppy, and the new 10-speed automatic transmission provides plenty of ratio range to work with, and it shifts nice and quickly and smoothly and all the rest. All of that is totally confident, totally fine. Okay. Pulling out onto the road, quickly coming to a stop. I will give it a bit of brake torque. 16, 1700 RPM, off we go. Yeah. Okay, pretty mild launch, but then we get moving pretty well. We have good fast shifts from that 10 speed transmission, just as I expected. And yeah, you know, that is pretty darn good hustle from this new dual overhead cam, three and a half liter V6. It is not a rocket ship, certainly. This thing weighs more than 4,500 pounds. Even the lightest Honda Pilot with front wheel drive is well over two tons. So I wasn't expecting to be very quick, but that is potent, stout power. You can feel that. Now, if you do get a chance to go through a couple of corners in this, you will feel a bit more pitch, a bit more roll, and a little bit less of a direct response. Again, all-terrain tires on the pavement don't have as sharp and as responsive a character as an all-season tire would. Even just sliding through this sweeper here, you can feel it kind of crest over and the steering's just a little bit slower to respond. But again, if you're into off-roading and want to do some of that, that is an easy trade-off, I'm sure. So yeah, generally speaking, this is a perfectly competent, perfectly comfortable, 
vehicle to have on road. But, come on, let's not fool ourselves. If Honda claims legit off-roading chops, let's go ahead and test that. All right, as promised, I am now off-road with the Honda Pilot Trail Sport. And right over there, that is Eric Stafford of Car and Driver Magazine writing a pretty little story about this car. So we're on something called the Broken Arrow Trail outside of Sedona, Arizona. And we are on what's called a moderate trail. And there's been a few fairly gnarly obstacles, but so far the pilot has handled it just fine. However, there have also been a couple of times where <laughs> the skid plate has come in handy. We are of course in the trail drive mode and making good use of the trail watch camera system. Multiple cameras at various vantage points to help mitigate any blind spots you'd have just from looking out of the windshield or the side windows. Oh boy, tight thing coming up here. Okay, I've got my first kind of big obstacle coming up. It's a pretty steep climb, muddy, rocky, and uh, yeah, could be interesting. I wouldn't want to do this in a regular crossover SUV, I know that much, but here we go. Got a camera mounted outside as well. Hopefully it stays attached. Ooh. Not being too bashful with the throttle. I do not want to get stuck halfway. Yeah, easy. That was actually not so bad. So this trail is not super gnarly in terms of just big rocks in the middle of the trail or anything like that, but it is quite narrow. And there are some pretty serious ruts that you have to navigate, so there's definitely moments. And as you can see from my front windshield camera, beautiful scenery, but sometimes not good views of the road. <laughs> so this uh, trail watch camera system is coming in plenty handy. Pink Jeep going past and then you guys need a tow and then we've got this nice deep canyon that we're driving through here just a whole lot of mud on either side of us oh bit of wheel spin but yep all-wheel drive engaged no problem the IVTM 4 system has worked pretty much flawlessly thus far you know when you add mud with uphill slopes and especially when that mud is on top of a pretty smooth rock it can be some pretty slippery moments, but nothing has really tripped us up yet. Oh boy, another narrow spot here. And then a nice little puddle. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, another thing to point out, these all-terrain tires are pretty fantastic. These do appear to be proper all-terrain tires, not just fake aggressive tread on an all season kind of a deal. I very much appreciate that. <laughs> all right, I've got another big obstacle coming up is kind of these like rocky stepped incline that uh, I think gets us pretty close to the top once we ascend this. So we're gonna give this a go. This will be a nice little challenge of grip. Oh, man, yeah, looks like couple couple pretty gnarly spots gotta avoid Ooh. like if you drop off this rock shelf it gets pretty bad definitely using the trail watch camera system a lot so I can see right I mean all I can see out of the windshield is a Vista that would do me no good yeah easy no problem at all There you go, off-roading in a Honda Pilot Trail Sport. How about that? And if you were at all curious what I was climbing, well, it was right here. This is the top of the Broken Arrow Trail. And right over there, that's Chicken Point, which, you know, don't take it the wrong way. It's very brave that the pilot made it to Chicken Point, ironically. Okay, say that again. 
you got the two nuns or the two sisters yeah here on the left the uh, chapel butte on the far right and right in between them is the madonna and child they and and for a little detail the, there's got movie camera up there between madonna and child and the twin sisters <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much henry payne of detroit news this by the way is the front skid plate that protects the engine and transmission and this is a skid plate in the rear to protect the fuel tank okay this is all hill descent control it's set at two miles an hour but all those buzzes that's the anti-lock brakes working for this particular hill descent it's working okay it's a little bit overactive it parts but Oh, we hit, we hit something. Oh, let's get moving. Uh, this is the fastest I've gone on this trail yet. Ooh, we even got a little mud on the windshield. So there you go off-roading in a Honda Pilot Trail Sport. It can be done. So what do we have in this Honda Pilot Trail Sport? We have seriously something different. This is the most capable off-roading vehicle that Honda has ever made. And yeah, we've proven that it's legit. Now, no, this is not all of a sudden some serious off-roader. You're not gonna compare this to Jeeps or the new Ford Bronco or anything like that. But legitimately, you can take this well off the beaten path and enjoy yourself. And personally, I'm really happy that the Trail Sport is no longer just an appearance package. It actually means something. I'm Robin Warner. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Doing so helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're into these like mild to moderate off-roading vehicles, you might want to check out the Subaru Outback Wilderness. That is another vehicle that is perfectly pleasant on road, but surprisingly capable off of it. And Subaru gave me a chance to test that as well. So you can go ahead and click on the link if you want. And from there, I've reviewed a bunch of other stuff. And one of those videos will pop up right next to me. Hopefully it's something you're interested in. And if you do check it out, I definitely hope you like it. Okay, goodbye for now.